And a good Tuesday morning to you. I'm meteorologist Pate Malone getting you your update out in the tropics for this June 28th. Uh, 10 a.m. update. We've got a lot going on for late June here, and this is going to be a really in-depth discussion on three different areas that we're going to be tracking in the near term and in the long term. So let's start with where we're at with our names at this point in our 2022 hurricane season. You can see there we've had Alex. Alex was um, back in early June. Our next name is Bonnie and then Colin. Now, It'll be interesting to see. We're probably going to get Bonnie at some point within the next couple of days. We still don't have it, but it looks like we could have it soon. Let's start with what's going on closest to the United States here. This is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. It's a tropical uh, disturbance. Basically, at this point, it's an unorganized area of showers and storms. There is some broad circulation, and you can see the broad circulation that has developed down there south. If you look just straight south of Lake Charles there on the graphic, there is some broad spin that you can see there in the clouds. This is this disturbance trying to come together uh, this morning, and this has been ongoing for about the past three days or so since Pat, last Saturday, this disturbance started and is moving off towards the, the west here, and this is where it sits as of this morning. Still lopsided or still broad. It's not organized enough to call it a depression or anything, but it is getting uh, kind of that spin, that look. To it. What you have to have in order for something to be considered a tropical cyclone, and remember a cyclone is a broad term for a depression, storm, or a hurricane, you had to have a low level circulation with persistent showers and storms firing up and continuing near that center of circulation. So you could see there, we've got the spin. You can see a low level circulation has developed over the Gulf, it looks like, but you really don't have a persistent area of showers and storms just yet. If we were to get a persistent area of showers and storms, this could become our depression, or maybe this becomes our next name storm. Maybe this is Bonnie or Colin. We'll just have to wait and see, but it is a possibility as this thing is going to continue to sit down here for about the next 48 hours or so. This thing still has about two days left over water. There's the development chances. Hurricane Center only giving this a 30% chance right now, but we'll say it's over the very warm Gulf waters. That's a given this time of year, but the wind shear, it's not that high. There's a little dry air, but not a lot. So this will have a chance to maybe become a depression and uh, definitely warrants worth watching or warrants watching along the Texas coast because it's going to continue to drift up towards the west and kind of north northerly direction eventually. So anywhere from really Brownsville up through Houston, even maybe up towards Lake Charles, be keeping an eye on this because this could be a rainmaker for someone along the coastal areas by uh, let's say Thursday. I think Thursday is when it would start to move inland for some of these areas. Once again, the warm waters, they are certainly there. That's a given. Some of these waters, especially up here in the northern Gulf, if you look just off the coast of Louisiana, we've had our heat wave now for a couple of weeks. Look what it has done to the water temperatures. 91, 91, 91, 90. So the Gulf is plenty hot. It's just, is this thing going to come together? And if it does, is it going to take advantage of the warm waters along with that low wind shear? we will uh, see, but it definitely uh, should be watched. This is what one of our models is showing. This is precision cast showing high resolution modeling, some showers and storms firing up, some of them struggling to continue, but if they can continue and be persistent enough, they could help develop a low level circulation with persistent storms and storms around that low level. That would give it the classification of uh, more than likely of a depression, or if the winds are 40 miles per hour or stronger than it gets a name. Notice by Thursday, heavy rain moving along the coast of Texas. This is one model run. It could change, but there could be heavy rain for areas from Houston, maybe as far west as like Lake Charles needs to be keeping an eye on this. Because also keep in mind, while I'm showing you model runs, it's guessing that a center is going to develop somewhere. If that center develops somewhere else, well, then the model runs will completely shift. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. But the overall message is that a center of circulation could develop maybe into a depression and it could dump some heavy rain. This is again one model run showing that some locations, especially closer you get to the Gulf of Mexico and the coast, could pick up some big totals as this thing moves inland by around uh, Thursday or so. That's our Gulf disturbance. Maybe it gets a depression status, maybe it gets a name. We will wait and see. It has about 48 more hours over the warm waters. Here is potential tropical cyclone two. This is still simply a disturbance, meaning the winds have not closed off. We actually don't have a closed circulation like what I just showed you in the Gulf, but we do have persistent showers and storms. So the two have one of each, but you got to have them come together to get a tropical depression or a tropical storm to get that classification. So in this case, we don't have a closed circulation, but we've got persistent storms. 
that could allow it to close off a of circulation maybe today or tomorrow. The Hurricane Center has put out a track for this because they do think it does become a storm. And this is the latest track as of 10 a.m. Moving off towards the west here, maybe strengthening some, and then they do have it potentially reaching hurricane status as it moves into Central America. That would be near Nicaragua by around Saturday or so. Keep in mind as well, with this system not having a close circulation, this could jump around. The track could jump around a little bit. Now, this is not coming to the Gulf of Mexico or anywhere near the U.S., but it could go a little bit further to the north and go further into the Caribbean. That could allow it to strengthen a little bit more than what's shown here. Whereas the flip side, let's say that center of circulation develops further down here on the southern end of this disturbance. Maybe it runs more into the land here and never really strengthens much and it's just a big rainmaker. Those are both possibilities, but this morning watching some of those showers and storms with it, let me back up here. A lot of these showers and storms, as you can see there, are on the northern side of that, that disturbance. So it's possible that maybe it takes more of that northerly track. We will once again, we will see. Now there's a third disturbance. This is really interesting that we're talking about all this in late June. Usually this part of the Atlantic is not very active in late June. It's usually got too much wind shear and it's usually got a lot of dry air. Now there's some dry air out here, but there hasn't been a ton of wind shear. And so things have really blossomed recently. This is another tropical wave. There's not much to it, but it's got some showers and storms. It's going to lift more northwesterly over the next several days and into the weekend. And then by around Saturday, Sunday, it will be towards the Lesser Antilles, the U.S., British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. This doesn't have a lot of um, strengthening within the guidance. Now, there's some models that do organize it, some, but none are really aggressive. That doesn't necessarily mean it can't, but it does have some dry air to work with. There is going to be a little bit more wind shear the further north you go up into this area, so we'll keep an eye on it long term. But in the near term, the next five to seven days, it's just going to be down here. We will watch it certainly, especially towards Florida, Cuba, Dominican Republic, as we go into more than likely the middle and end of next week. By the way, just to give you an idea what the steering currents are with all three of these, right now what's going on with our steering currents is you have uh, the high pressure, the Bermuda High is steering. Um, let me put a stopper on this so I can, can point out what's going on. There's our steering high. There's our disturbance that is currently forecast to become a tropical storm or hurricane. We'll see if it's called Bonnie or Colin. That's being steered by this high. Our disturbance over the Gulf is being steered by the uh, this ridge of high pressure as well. That's going to steer it more to the north because this ridge is eventually going to start to weaken some, as you can see it. And that's why that Gulf disturbance is going to ride eventually more north rather than west. Notice this high still suppressing this. That's why it's going into Central America. What we'll be watching with that tail end disturbance by next week, uh, by this weekend and next week, is what it does around this ridge of high pressure. If this ridge weakens enough, maybe this thing gets pulled further to the north, but at the same time, it all just depends on the strength of this high, and that's a long ways out, and it's hard to forecast all these different variables with accuracy and precision more than five days out, which is why we don't typically forecast the tropics more than five days out. So we will watch and see. Once again, just very interesting to be tracking these three systems. I want to note, make a note of how rare it is to get a storm forming deep in the Atlantic or deep in the tropics like this with what we're watching with those two disturbances, not in the Gulf, but out there. Notice how many storms have formed out here in late June, about three. That's it. That's going back to the 1800. That's going back over a hundred years uh, with the data we have, of course, but at least in recent years, it's still very, very rare. And there's two disturbances out here that could form out in this part of the Atlantic in June. That is not very common. Now, notice where it is common to get tropical features developing in late June, the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean. And interestingly enough, there's a cluster. You see this cluster of storms and uh, that have developed in late June, right where we're watching for the potential for this Invest 95 is what we're calling it to develop. These typically form off upper level lows or tail ends of cool fronts. In this case, it's not really associated so much with the tail end of that cool front. That's definitely uh, enhancing some storms in here, but there was that disturbance in that upper level low and upper level trough that traveled through the Gulf. And once it gets here, then it eventually sometimes lifts to the north or moves into Texas. So just kind of interesting. We call this climatology looking back at all this data through the years. And that tells us that uh, this is somewhat of an interest, interested zone for tropical formation in late June. So this is not surprising that maybe we're getting something trying to form here off the Texas and Louisiana coast 
in late June. Once again, we'll keep an eye on it. Wouldn't be surprised if a depression tries to form in the Gulf in the next couple of days. It does look like it would mainly be a rainmaker. Maybe it becomes strong enough and organized enough to get the name Bonnie or Colin. We will see. At the same time, it may struggle to ever really organize enough. And yes, it would still produce some rainfall, but may not get that classification. So just something interesting to watch. And if you live along the Texas and especially the western and uh, Louisiana coastlines, do keep an eye on this as we go through the next couple of days. Once again, expected to be mainly a rainmaker for those locations. Out in the Atlantic, we're watching those other two tropical features that could get a name as well. But that's going to do it for our Tuesday morning 10 a.m. tropical update. Thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone.